you may well be wondering to yourself what on earth is this idiot doing well if i were to have any chance of breeding these pupa which are death said hawk moth pupa i need to know what i've got sex wise i've got six pupa here Four of these appear to be female and two appear to be male. So that's a decent enough ratio to have a breeding stock. Whether I attempt breeding these magnificent and large moths remains to be seen, but I might as well have a go. And if, like myself, you like a rearing larva and then through the pupil stage to the adults, you may want to have a go at breeding butterflies and moths yourself and in order to determine what stock you've got or what percentage of males and females you have while in the pupil stage I'm going to show you how to do it it's quite a simple process and all you need is one of these or some decent eyes which I don't have it would help if I had some glasses but I've no idea where they are Anyway, here's how to sex the pupa that you may have in your breeding stock. Here's two very large pupa which are absolutely ideal for showing the differences between male and female pupa. It's generally easier in moths and to be honest most people will be more interested probably in breeding and rearing some of the larger moths like this species here which is death said hawk moth. Female pupa here and the male just here and you can see that there is a size difference between the two and although that's usually a good guideline it's by no means a guarantee that you've got male and female you can have very large males and very small males and vice versa with female pupa but sex in pupa especially those of moths is relatively easy even easier when they become still and cooperative like these two here i'll let you into secret it's took about 15 minutes for me to get them stayed still like this in the right light and in the right position these are really active pupa whenever you handle them they will wriggle like crazy so how do we go about sexing the pupa of male and female moths well the answer is on the end segments here if you count in you don't include this abdominal section where the wings come over and you go one two three and four sections so you're looking there on the female one two three four sections on the male there the difference are two sort of slight bulges and you'll see them just there on the male i'll put a photo in here and you'll see the difference between the two so you're looking one two three four segments in if there are two very tiny sort of bulges side by side with what appears to be a slit in it and you've got a male if you look on the female here one two three four you'll see that there's nothing there and the photo will obviously show these features up but they can be seen on even smaller pupa right down to not micro moth size but certainly down to noctuids and geometries and other families as well but that's 
how you tell the difference between male and female pupa. So it's four sections down, one, two, three, four. If there's no little two bulges and slot just there, you've got the female. One, two, three, four on there. And you'll see just there at the end of where the paintbrush is, there are two small bulges through what appears to be a slot in between. So you've got female here and male here. And that's a simple way of sexing pupa.